back to the penultimate session in our conference. Um, we're shifting gear slightly in this closing hour, in this session and the final session, to begin to just think about what we do next and where we go from here, to begin to think about how we can translate what we've been thinking about as a Life on the Breadline research team over the last three years and what we've been sharing together over the last two days in this conference. And I'm delighted to, to be sharing this session with my colleague and friend, Deacon Eunice Atwood from the British Methodist Church. Eunice will share something of her experience and her thoughts and reflections a little bit later in the next half an hour. Thanks for sparing the time, Eunice. So, Life on the Red Line, an anti-poverty charter. Why develop an anti-poverty charter? There are a couple of questions I want to answer over the next 20 minutes or so. Why, what, who, and how? So the first thing I wanted to do is to nail a myth that researchers sometimes continue to perpetuate that there is something called neutral research. That's nonsense. Anybody that suggests that is trying to fool us because none of us are neutral, certainly in the face of more than a decade of austerity in the face of increasing levels of poverty and inequality, it would be criminal in my mind to be neutral as researchers, as practitioners, as churches, as policymakers, as we are more than a decade into this age of austerity. So within the Life on the Red Line team, we want to suggest that there is no place for debates about how many angels we can fit on the head of a pin. Theology, and I speak as a theologian, theology needs to step up to the plate. Theology needs to honestly and openly say, we are here to make a difference. Our research is not neutral because we reflect what we believe is God's preferential option for the poor in the face of structural injustice. So in the words of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, we talked about Bonhoeffer yesterday, but his words I think are so powerful that they're, they're worth repeating. Bonhoeffer reminds the church that we're called not simply to bind up the wounds of the broken beneath the wheels of injustice, but to ram a spoke into the wheel of injustice itself. So why an anti-poverty charter? Well, because we want our research to be a force for progressive social change. Because as a research team, Stephanie, Peter, Robert and myself, we are all committed to enabling and empowering and resourcing churches, Christian NGOs, and policymakers across the UK to be more effective in defeating the violence of intersectional poverty. We want to translate our research in the Anti-Poverty Charter into a user-friendly, values-based resource that can stimulate contextualized anti-poverty action and reflection locally where we live and where we work across the UK. So that's something of the why. Let me move on from the why to the how. The Anti-Poverty Charter, which, as I will say in a moment or two, is now living on our, on our website, but more about that in a moment, hasn't just dropped from the clouds. It wasn't a conversation that Stephanie and I had one Friday afternoon over a cup of coffee. It was something that is something that has emerged organically from three years research alongside national and regional church leaders, local Christians and people experiencing poverty. The charter has emerged out of successive conversations and discussions at the national poverty consultation that are 
project partner, Church Action on Poverty and the Life on the Breadline team collaborated in developing the National Poverty Consultation in 2021 spoke specifically about the development of an anti-poverty charter. So consultation over three years arising from our research, consultation at the National Poverty Consultation earlier this year, and then conversations with representatives from all of our six project case studies over the last few months. So the charter, we hope, is something that has emerged from conversation and consultation to meet the needs that I identified, I identified a moment or two ago. So that's something of the how. Let's think about the what. I've talked about this, I've used this phrase anti-poverty charter, and you might well be thinking, well, what's he talking about? If you go onto the Life on the Breadline website, Breadline Research, if you just type that into your internet connection, into Google, you will see reference on the website to the Anti-Poverty Charter. It's a reflective resource. It's something that we have developed, as I say, in conversation and consultation, specifically to guide the reflection and anti-poverty activism of local congregations in urban, rural and suburban contexts across the UK. It's something we talked a moment or two ago about the ABCD approach to community building. We're conscious of the fact that it is absolutely vital if this anti-poverty charter is going to have an impact that we all make it our own in the places and the communities where we live. So the Anti-Poverty Charter is very, very deliberately adaptable and needs to be contextualized and rooted in the challenges we face in our neighborhoods. But it's not just a how-to resource, it's a resource that's rooted in what we believe as a breadline team are a fundamental gospel values and I will move on to those in just a moment or two it's practical though it offers a suggestion suggestion of a number of possible types of action some on the charter itself which can be downloaded downloaded from our website as two sides of a4 perfect for those notice boards in church but also easily to share via email as well you'll see suggestions for action values that the anti-poverty charter is rooted in, but also more actions and suggestions for action to follow on the website. So that's something of the, the how and the why and the what. Let me say something now about those values that I've referred to that you will see on the anti-poverty chart when you go to our website and download it. This is something we want to offer from the Life on the Red Line team to the church across the UK as a small step, as a, a resource that can enable us all to work more effectively to challenge poverty where we are. But we felt it was vital that that action to challenge poverty is rooted in core values. And these are values that we have talked over with our project partners and case study partners over the last few months and longer than that since 2018. Here are those values. I'm not going to read them all out because you can see them on the screen, but the Anti-Poverty Charter is rooted in the conviction that all people are equally precious, that that importance that we heard a few moments ago in the ABCD session about beginning with the assumption that all people have worth, all people have something to offer, all people have innate, inherent dignity. We are all created in the image of God, so we are all equally precious. We're therefore called to reject stereotypes and binaries that objectify people. We are called in an unjust society to take on what's often referred to as the preferential option for the poor. That's a phrase that emerges from Latin American liberation theology. In an unjust society, a loving God, necessarily, liberation theologians argue, 
as a preferential option for the poor. We need to focus on dignity and assets that are already present in local communities. The church, we believe, is called to consciously prioritize people experiencing poverty. Social action needs to be characterized by solidarity because in what Christians refer to as the incarnation, God has become one of us. The word has become flesh. Jesus has become our brother, sharing our life and walking our walk. Consequently, long-term anti-poverty action is a central tenet of the anti-poverty charter, as well as meeting immediate need. We need to speak truth to power if we're going to love our neighbors effectively. And we also, and I think this is something that often within churches we perhaps step back from. It's, it's quite common, isn't it, in many churches for poverty to be relegated, work on poverty or work on racial justice or work on structural injustice, to be sidelined to a church's social responsibility committee or its mission committee or its social justice committee. What we want to say within Life on the Breadline is that the charter invites us to encourage and in some cases challenge our church leaders to ensure that considering poverty and inequality, thinking about how as local churches we can challenge poverty and inequality, need to be placed at the centre of church life and not just in its social action. So what might challenging poverty mean as we have conversations about the use of our church buildings? What might challenging poverty mean as we have conversations about how we use our financial resources as churches? What might challenging poverty mean as we think about the worshipping life um, of our churches? Challenging poverty must be a central feature of all church areas of church life, not just its social action. So that's something of the values that underpin the anti-poverty charter. The anti-poverty charter is not just a resource, it's something that is intended to invite us to act. And so what we have done on the two-page anti-poverty charter is to provide some suggested anti-poverty actions and I stress that these are suggestions to get you thinking locally where you are. Invite one of the breadline team to speak at your church or your group. Think about the ways in which we can challenge the myths that we read or hear about poverty or about the communities where we live. We heard Paul and Sarah and Claire and Al talking about the ways in which in, on occasions the Furs and Bromford estate in Birmingham has been stigmatised. I guess that's a picture that many of us in different parts of the country can identify with. Let's challenge those myths that we hear about poverty. We want to invite you to use the austerity timeline that we've developed on our project website to find out more about government policy. Use the charter in Bible studies or in a worship series at your local church. Go onto our website and download and use the free Life on the Breadline Lent course. We talked about mapping in several sessions. That's absolutely critical, it seems to me. So why not work with others to develop a community profile of your neighbourhood that is going to inform action? And when I say a community profile, I don't just mean those indices of multiple deprivation that Al referred to, although those are important. I mean the key players, the key community groups, the gifts, the strengths, the different social action projects, whether those are faith-based or not, that make up life in your neighbourhood. That, it seems to me, provides us with a real resource to develop informed anti-poverty action as local Christians. But moving further, are there employers in your neighborhood that do not pay the real living wage? They pay the minimum wage, but can we get by on the minimum wage? Not very easily. 
encourage pe people locally, employers locally, to pay the real living wage. Work with others. Citizens UK has worked very strongly and, and for a number of years on campaigns for a living wage, as has our project partner, Church Action on Poverty. And as I've said a moment or two ago, ensure that tackling poverty features in all church meetings, not just those social action meetings. So next steps. The Life on the Breadline Charter is now live on the project website. Check it out and sign up to the charter. If you want to sign up as an individual, a local church, a congregation, a community group, you will then be acknowledged on the project website as an anti-poverty charter congregation. Be part of that network, be part of the change that we want to create. Download a copy of the charter and commit yourself to take specific actions and use the charter to shape the social action of your local church. Encourage other churches in your neighborhood to sign up to the charter and send a copy of the charter to your regional or national church leaders and encourage them to use the resource to help the social action of your denomination. And why not get back in touch with us, perhaps six months down the line, to let us know what actions you've taken as you've started to reflect on and use the anti-poverty charter. Now, I've done more than enough talking, and so I wanted to invite Deacon Eunice Atwood to share with us a little bit of the way in which she's hoping within the Methodist Church in Britain's Church at the Margins Initiative to draw on the Anti-Poverty Charter. Thanks for sparing some time to be with us today, Eunice, and over to you. Chris, thank you so much. And thank you to the whole um, Breadline Research team for just such a fabulous conference. And what a timely gift this is, I feel, to the whole church, the, research, the rich research and the great resources that you've surfaced. And I particularly really uh, love the Anti-Poverty Charter. I think as I started in this new role as Church at the Margins Officer for the Methodist Church, I'm really conscious of something that Anthony Reddy said this morning. He talked about maybe the church, if people looked at it, would think that really it was demonstrating God's preferential option to the middle class. And I really, as a member of the Methodist Church, for me personally, I really want to listen and learn and be willing to change, be changed by the lives of people experiencing poverty. And I think this charter is a great gift for that. I think it's wonderful on one side we have these values and then also some actions are just fabulous because I see in our churches a lot of people who really think yes we should do something and perhaps even want to do something and they would look at the values and most of them perhaps but not all of them they they would want to say yes to but they don't know what to do so they don't know what the next step might be so I think one of the values that I really appreciate is that challenge and poverty must be central, a central feature of all areas of church life. And I actually think that to be a disciple of Christ means that challenge and poverty can't be an optional extra on a personalized menu of discipleship. It has to be at the heart of what it means to be a Christian disciple. So for me, I want to invite everyone in our church, every circuit, every district, to look at the charter and to think about what's the next step that they could take. So Chris, one of the things that I really like is the way that you've given lots of suggested actions, lots of different options. And my prayer and my hope is that each church community will look at those actions and think, what's the next step we could take? What's the next small step on what for some churches is a chasmic gap between their aspiration for what they might do and what they actually, not all churches, for some they're doing all kinds of things and they're with their communities and alongside and very much being with, but not all. So I'm really grateful, Chris, for this combination of gospel values of discipleship and next steps, actions, things people think they could actually do. So thank you. I just think it's great and I would commend it to all of you. 
Thank you very much indeed, Eunice. And it's wonderful to hear that you're hoping to use this within the Methodist Church, Church at the Margins Initiative. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. While you're thinking about whether there are any reflections that you have on our call to action and this resource that we're offering in the Life on the Breadline Anti-Poverty Charter, let's just have a quick glance at Katie's um, image that she's drawn for us, um, reminding us that research is never neutral. It seems to me we're always on one side of an argument or the other, even if we say nothing, that itself, it seems to me, is taking a side. The Anti-Poverty Charter arises out of three years of research, consultation and conversation. We're encouraging you to sign the Charter and take the next step and developing actions in your local community. So the Anti-Poverty Charter is an expression of our discipleship. It enables us to speak truth to power and to prioritise people living in poverty locally. I think we're just about out of time um, in this anti-poverty charter session. Thank you once again, Eunice, for your help.